Hello and welcome to EV Loop, powered by Car Loop. I'm Adrian Maidment. And I'm Riz Akhtar. Good to be on, Adrian. Good good to see you, Riz, since you're sort of pretty important to the whole operation. Uh, this, this, this episode, we've got a few topics. We've got EVs recently driven, EV sales data, chart of the week, and a big Volkswagen crisis. But I thought this week would start off just some uh, feedback on recently driven vehicles. But yeah. we'll just go the smart with the hashtags first. Uh, hashtags. Uh, hey, if you want to set up, if you want to be uh, set aside and sort of look apart in this market, uh, definitely have a different name. So hashtag one, hashtag three. I got a chance to drive it last week. We never touched on it last episode because I was not allowed to. Embargo is yeah. the word we like to use in the industry. Embargoed. I know. We'll, 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 so embargo is lifted and. Uh, they were quite fun to drive, so we got a chance to drive them from Brisbane all the way back of the Gold Coast hinterland and down to Byron Bay. Um, overall, uh, I think it was over 200 kilometers of country and city driving um, without obviously needing to charge, and both cars performed very well in all their different variants. Um, I quite like the look of the hashtag 3, which is slightly bigger than the hashtag 1. Having said that, both cars are much bigger than the original Smarts. So it's Smart reinventing itself into a into a bigger, more popular brand. And I was very impressed with the first group of vehicles that they'll be launching into the Australian market. And what sort of size they are they comparable with? So I think the hashtag 3 is comparable to a Volvo EX30. Um, so small, compact electric SUV. Mm. And the one's just a bit smaller. One's just a little bit smaller. Um, looks a little bit more conventional in terms of a sort of a hatchback type of a format. But both of those vehicles are priced with the starting price under sixty thousand dollars. Okay. And is there anything else you've been driven? Uh, anything else driving? So driving wise, I also was in Canberra last week and got to drive the. Cherry Omoda, um, which is another electric SUV, sort of compact, but it's Cherry's first electric car in the Australian market. Um, and we got to learn a little bit about the pricing, which is pretty competitive from the sounds of things, um, starting at 42990 plus on roads. And it's there to compete with the BYD at 03 and um, the MG ZS EV, which we've seen a couple of price cuts from recently. Um, driving it through the hills at the back of Canberra into New South Wales and back on a pretty extensive drive program, I thought it performed really well. Um, according to Cherry, they have done eight months of local testing, and they showed some pictures, actually, of like driving uh, and parking in front of windmills down in Victoria, um, as well as going through different parts of New South Wales and uh, even through the hills in New South Wales and other parts of the country. So they've done thousands of kilometers of testing with their engineers to make sure it's fairly well suited for Australia and New Zealand driving conditions. And the end product that we got to drive, the production cars, really felt like that. Um, so, yeah, quite quite an impressive um offering with the amount of features that are packed into that price point that Cherry is bringing into the Australian market. Mm. And I'd probably expect a few more models from them as well, wouldn't wouldn't you, sort of big company? Yeah, models and potentially even brands. So they've got a couple of brands in in China that they are potentially looking for export into Australian and other markets. So yeah, well, we'll keep an eye out for those. So that's um, a bit of driving, and so why we're on new models, let's talk about new sales. Sales data from last month came through. A bit of a downturn, Riz. Yeah, it's appearing that way, Adrian. Like, we've had a pretty strong 2024 so far, and as it appears, a bit of a um, small hurdle in the way of EV sales sort of shooting off. So... All in all, we had uh, just under 6,000 electric cars registered during August, um, which is, you know, still a significant amount. Um, but now that the data itself doesn't come from um, FCAI VFACTS, it's a combination of VFACTS as well as 
Electric Vehicle Council, adding all of those things together, it's just under 6% for the month. Um, there are several reasons behind it. Um, I'm actually quite disappointed about the way the electric vehicle sales are starting to go at the moment. Um, but we're hoping, you know, with education and trying to spread the right information and not all this fight around EVs and all the things they can't do, um, hopefully we'll get that back up in the coming months. On We also have many new brands launching with products that, you know, are suitable to many more drivers. So that's also worth keeping an eye on in the coming months. Oh, what, are, what are some of the standout features from the, the sales of, the, of last month? So surprisingly, if we look a little bit outside of the electric vehicle sales, BYD um, had one of its best months. But the bulk of those sales, or well, more than half, were its new plug-in hybrid Sea Lion 06, um, which sold over a 1,000 units of that car. Uh, compare that to all the rest of its three electric models that, um, let's just say, couldn't even add up to what the Tesla Model 3 sold during the month. So all in all, it was over 950 units with BYD Auto 3, Dolphin, and Seal put together. Now that's obviously maybe sign of the times that more people are looking for plug-in hybrids. Could be that they had the world's biggest test drive and they um, were looking at, I guess, potentially moving more Sea Lion 06 plug-in hybrid stock instead of looking at their EV options. But I guess time will tell. Hmm. Um, so basically, it's still BYD and Tesla are leading in the pack, though, wasn't it? Sort of. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, Tesla Model Y was a best-selling car once again. The Model 3 did fairly well as well, given ha- given the sort of uh, sign of the times with EV uptake at the moment. And it will be quite interesting to see what Tesla does from here. They have extended their low interest rate offering of 1.99%, um, which is supposed to end at the end of August into September. So, yeah, we'll see what happens from here. Now we'll move on to one of the, one of my highlights. It's chart of the week, and this week we're off to New South Wales. Yeah, so New South Wales is the biggest um, car market. Uh, that also translates to the biggest electric car market. They now have over 66,000 battery electric vehicles registered in the state, making it the biggest fleet in the country. Um, That's actually uh, been strong performance over the last couple of years, particularly with the New South Wales government having very progressive policy on rebates, um, which are no longer available. But they've invested a lot more money into fleets and charging. So that charging rollout continues to expand, which is a good thing. And that's giving people in New South Wales a lot of confidence and that's also driving private investment for charging infrastructure in the state that once again it's a bit of a flow on effect. We also saw a state north of that Queensland is doing pretty well when it comes to EV uptake given the size of the state it has nearly 50,000 battery electric vehicles um, and a lot of it was thanks to a very generous subsidy that was there of up to $6,000. That has just been taken away Uh, which means it would be interesting to monitor to see if the EV uptake in the state continues to grow at that stage or if it's going to mellow down a little bit, which would obviously impact the overall EV uptake numbers across the country. So watch this space. Mm. Okay, and let's get back to um, local sales, price cuts. Get back to price cuts, and I always see the headline MG price cuts, and I know there's a price cut from MG. What's the latest one? Oh, the latest one is on the MG ZS EV, which um, last month they cut the price on uh, its base model, uh, making it 35000 or under 35000 drive away, which is very close to, I guess, a petrol or an ICE vehicle um, for an SUV format. Now they've uh, basically gone to the mid-spec variant, Um, which is their Essence variant, and they've cut the price on that as well, to $39,990 drive away, down from $41,990 plus on-road costs. That's nearly $5,000 off the price of that car, Um, which, you know, hopefully will help the brand continue to sell more ZS EVs um, as we get to that 
bit of a slowdown as that we spoke about earlier in the market. Hmm, okay, and a slight change of tact. Uh, buses, EV buses. Yeah, so Victoria has announced that it will be actually purchasing more um, electric buses. Uh, they're planning to get up to 600 new electric buses by 2035. Now, that itself is a bit of a you know big goal, but we need to do that a lot quicker. So, you know, like as, as governments should be, they should be accelerating us purchasing electric buses and getting rid of the, the smelly diesel buses, which we know are harmful to people's health. Uh, but we're not doing it at a fast enough pace. We need to do a lot more than that. 600 is a good commitment, but states like New South Wales are charging ahead compared to where Victoria is at. So, yeah, we need to do better when it comes to electric vehicles and electric buses. That could very well be the first exposure to electric vehicles on the road for many Victorians if they get hop onto an electric bus. And that could get them thinking, hey, if I've got a car at home, maybe it should be electric as well because they're quite uh, uh, just so much better to be in. Um, so we need to get more electric buses on the road sooner. Mm, it's quite a long way away, isn't it? 2035? Well, kind of, yeah. Um, and just sort of tying into the change of forecast, this is from the Driven. EV forecast slashed as new vehicle standards allow car makers room to push hybrids. Yeah, quite interesting that one. That forecast is done by AEMO, which is Australian Energy Market Operator, that's meant to keep an eye out on what's happening with the EV market because all these cars are going to need to be charged, so hence it needs energy and focus on our grid. But yeah, they've they've shelved a lot of that uh, forecasting, um, and now it's pushed it out by a couple of years, um, which is a bit disappointing, uh, given you know the market is only supposed to accelerate and not be taken back due to plug-in hybrids. So one of the reasons that they state is uh, because people are going to be driving their cars longer, and they won't need to upgrade as much. Uh, that's for ICE vehicles that they're talking about. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think once a new technology comes in, people's desire to want to be part of that transition becomes higher. So they've pushed it back. But in our opinion, uh, you know, Carloop's done its own forecasting. That's supposed to be, um, we're supposed to be accelerating ahead. We particularly focus on vehicles and the amount of new brands, models, battery technology improvements, batteries getting cheaper, global supply chains, um, China's ambition to be the biggest exporter of electric vehicles, um, and the benefits of electric vehicles um, coming in the form of affordable cars that are in parity or better price than their ICE counterparts, it's going to ramp things up very, very quickly. And I think like the solar court Australian energy market operator off guard, this is going to happen in the same way. So with, you know, over 10 new brands about to launch in the next 12 months, I think that, um, you know, the forecast and EV uptake is only going to accelerate ahead and it won't be delayed by a couple of years as AEMO is predicting now. Okay, well, let's move on to probably one of the big international, well, let's move on to the big international story. We're sort of the probably overall thought of change on this episode and it's for Volkswagen who have got uh, some major issues this is according to the Irish Times headline that uh, car alarms are sounding all over Germany this week after warnings from Volkswagen that without radical reform Europe's largest car maker has almost has at most two years left and they're looking at uh, closing down some of their local factories to try to um, cut costs so that's a huge story yeah, so never in the history of Volkswagen have they had to close plants in their own home country of Germany, and it's starting to happen. Uh, they haven't bounced back properly on the back of COVID. European car market hasn't. Um, and now the demand for Volkswagen's electric products, which are getting a bit old, they're getting a bit old, but they haven't even launched in Australia yet. So they're, it's just not there. And they're going to have to take some drastic measures by closing plants by you know having to make a whole lot of their workforce redundant and that's not even considering what's happening to them in china in china they were a dominant player for decades 
and now the local players are doing so much better in terms of shipping product out that Chinese consumers want and doing it at cost competitive advantages that Volkswagen just doesn't have. So yeah, time time will tell. Well, let's, let's move on to something positive, a positive story, Tesla and the robo-taxi. So robo-taxis are coming, self-driving cars, all the When are- though, Riz, when, when? <laughs> oh, October it is. They reckon 10th of October at the Warner Brothers Studios in the US that Tesla has potentially leaked to have had their robo-taxi event being held there. And that's going to be quite interesting to see. Let's see if they can actually demo and showcase a car driving itself just because someone has ordered it on a phone like an Uber. So just, you know, less than a month's time, we will get to see that demo. And hopefully, I'm also hoping that there's a couple of more affordable models that they also launch, um, or at least unveil anyway, because... Robotaxi could still be years away, but people still want to buy cars, and they want to buy cleaner, technologically advanced electric cars that are affordable enough for people to have in their garages. So hopefully there's a mixture of robotaxis, which is the future, but also short-term, some more affordable models from Tesla being unveiled next month. Okay, it's all positive from Tesla. And just summing up, maybe what's what's coming up on your calendar and the in the EV calendar as a whole in Australia? So a few large events are starting to happen. So I guess starting with um, we have All Energy coming up uh, in October. We have Mobility Live coming up in October in Melbourne. Um, Moving up north into Sydney, we have the Sydney International EV Show. Um, That's in November. But early in November, we also have Australian Electric Vehicle Association's conference being held in Tasmania in Hobart. So that's sort of what's coming up next month and into November. But short term this week, I will be um, at Australian Electric Vehicle Association event um, in Melbourne, where we will get to check out one of BYD's new experience centers in the inner city suburb of Cremorne. So I might have more to share next week on how that goes. And I think we might get a bit of a sneak peek into some of the models that BYD is planning on launching, including their all-electric Sea Lion 7 SUV, which is meant to make its debut later this year. So watch this space. Thanks, Riz, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Please like and subscribe to this Uh, YouTube channel and share the podcast with others. We're also expecting to get some podcast guests coming up and if you're interested in being on our podcast, please reach out to us at info at carloop.com.au but until next week, catch you all then.